Okay, Stuka Joe here from the Six Bayota Con. It is January 28th, Saturday. Uh, the video says 8.30. We started a little bit later than 8.30 because what happens at 8.30 today is the famous Bayota ham that is given to all the participants. Now, you may wonder why the convention is called the Bayota Con. And it is because in this region of Spain, Extremadura, one of the principal uh, industries is the, uh, the, the pig industry for ham. And the pigs eat acorns. And acorns in Spanish is called bellota. So it's ham from pigs that are raised uh, with bellota. So that's why it's called the bellota con. And el señorío is a company that sponsors the Bellota Con, and it is a company located here in Badajoz which sells Bellota ham to many countries around the world, exports Bellota ham. So they are the main sponsors of the Bellota Con. So there's gonna be Bellota ham given to the participants and I think some uh, local beers also. So uh, let's take our cameras over there. And so you can see this is customary at the Bellota Con. And some conventions it's been done on Fridays. In other conventions it's been done on Saturdays. This one, it's Saturday, 8.30. So let's go over. So you can see there's nobody, play well, some people are playing games, but there's a big line back there. I can zoom in so you can, we're gonna be heading back there where you see that line over there. That's where we are headed. So let's see how, oh, the activity's on. Let me see, let's get on, let's get over there so we don't miss it. It may be a little bumpy, but be rushing over there. So if you ever come to the Bellota Con, you'll get your ham. Uh, this year there's no wine, but there's beer. And uh, let's go over there. <clears throat> okay. Let's... It's a long auditorium. It's a long walk. Hello. So, 
Everybody with their beer here. See if we can get a little closer. Hey, ¿cómo estamos? Saludos. Permiso por aquí. This is Sergio. Sergio is the organizer. Sergio Alama. So this is Kike Esparrago, he's the president of El Señorío, which is a sponsor. See the ham being being cut. Mm -hmm. You see, you see the bayota ham here. Welcome USA Dreamhouse. The famous bellota ham. This thing is delicious. It is really an art form to cut this ham. Everybody picks their plate, they have their ham, they get, get over. Senorio de Montanera. That's the name of the company. This first uh, string of ham is gone. Now that game is called the, the Other Side of the Hill. That's the name of the game. Al otro lado de la colina. The Other Side of the Hill in English. So this table is wiped out. Switch to the wide camera to see, so you know the, you get an idea of the number of people here. And this is customary here, the Bellota Con. It is tasty. Um, I hope I hope I, uh, I get some. These are the the downside of filming, but uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll, I'll get some. 
Oh, mira, otra gracia. Una, una, una. Ah. <risa> <risa> dos, dos, tres. Ok, gracias. Con, gracias, gracias. So, so here you got, I have the evidence that I got some here. <risa> Si quieres queso también. No, el jamón está por ahí, el jamón está perfecto. Muchas gracias, Ave María, esto es. Ya sé, vale la pena venir, vale la pena cruzar el charco. Gracias. Thank you. I was going to take the whole plate. Carlos ahí para el jamón. Bueno, pues falla. A veces la gente como a mí no sabe jamón. Oh, so long. I'm sorry. Yes, I got my piece and it's delicious. So I see, I see if I can get a plate. So I can take over to my wife over there. She's on the other side of the hall. I'm going to wait in line here. If you have any questions, USA Dreamhouse. I have uh, got to do the line here like everybody else. So. How much would I estimate a month's long trip to Spain in conjunction with the Bellota Convention with cost in the U.S.? Oh boy, that's a good one. Uh, I don't know, it depends on when, when you, where you stay in Spain. Madrid is more expensive than, than other places, but really don't know. Uh, I guess we can talk about that when I get back to Puerto Rico. We can do a session on that and I can, I can tell you at least how I traveled. To the Bellota Com. So let's hold that question for now. Man, I appreciate it. Thank you, US Dream, USA Dream House. Two code words during D Day, Pegasus Bridge. I don't know why this reminds me. Ham and jam, okay. Well, this is the ham part. Okay. And you have the other ham cutter over there. Uh, you can see it. María, saliste de oro. Pero yo quería que you guys to see how what uh, this activity because it's very special. 
and uh, the ham is just amazing. It's truly a delicacy. Yeah. Well, I hope I'm still on in the line, so let's see. So. What new games am I looking forward to? Okay. Uh, both games from Mac look very interesting. The other side of the hill and uh, the king in the north. There is also, uh, what other games? Uh, that Mosul game from, uh, they call it uh, Nuts Publishing, looks very interesting also. Boy, this, it's, a, it's a hard question, but there's a lot of games. Um, see what, other, what other games? So let me see if I can remember. We got uh, Sweden checking in, Von. Holdinghausen. Welcome. So, uh, also that, that Malvinas 82 or 83 game, the Falkland War game, looks interesting always. It's a topic I like, the Falklands War. Especially two player. So there's not a lot of, it's not a, a lot of Falkland games anyway. Okay, any wine still left? Well, they, they have beer this year. For some reason, they don't have wine. They have beer, but these are the local, local artisan beers here from Extremadura. I think the beer's over. I'm, I'm doing the. I just want the ham. It's. They always have beer and wine. This year they only have beer. They have cheese and uh, and ham, of course, which is the main feature here. Has to cut it in thin slices. This is a ham that you eat little by little, and you taste every bit of it. So. See how the other table is. Have another line over there. <laughs> it takes a little while to load the plate. <laughs> ah, it's for me. No, no. Uh, uh, uno, uno de ellos. Ah, bueno. <laughs> Tengo una mala costumbre de eso de coger. <laughs> este está bien. Ok. We got another one. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Salud. Salud. Uh, I got another one. So, this is my second one. This one I'm tasting. I'm going to let it longer here. <laughs> I tried to get the whole plate again, but I tried. I tried. So David says, keep an eye for Carrier Battle Philippine Sea by John Southard. Solitaire, yes, that's a, 
a game based on the carrier, the Victory Games carrier game, which is a very involved solitaire system. Uh, I remember the Victory game had about 60 pages of rules. I have it, but I have never played it. So I don't know if uh, they've streamlined the next one, if Compass is going to streamline it. We have CJ Alves, and he says, Hey, Stuka, thanks for the stream. Very good job on this Bellota Con. Enjoy the jamoncito. I will do. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I still have some. I'm, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> thanks. Delicious. Okay, yes, there. Okay, there's bus connections from Sevilla to to Badajoz. I think it's a two, uh, two and a half hour bus ride. Normally what I do, I travel to Madrid, then I take a plane. The plane is 50 minutes and it costs about, I don't know, 80 bucks. One way about, uh, if you buy a two way ticket, it's like 150 bucks. The thing with uh, this region here in Extremadura, there were plans to build a high speed rail track from Madrid to Lisbon that would pass through Extremadura and would pass through Badajoz. And appropriations were made and, and construction started and some, some, something happened that it halted, which is a real shame. You see a lot of development happening recently in Badajoz. And I hope they resume the, the fast railway, high speed uh, train so you can get the AVE. I, I would suppose from Madrid to here in, in an AVE-like train would take about a, maybe an hour and a half. And then you see the countryside, which is amazing also. So that's, I think that's what I know about the train here. And we got Jay Field. Hey, Jay, you haven't missed a single live stream. Has the record here. You're waiting for that one too, this, uh, the carrier game. Okay, good, victory, based on the victory games carrier game, the one on the Philippine Sea. Yeah, cherish, to cherish the victory games carrier game, okay. Oh, the food at the convention is really nice. Uh, I mean, the, the food at the facility here, the restaurant is, the cafeteria is light food, but it's, you have your, um, you have uh, the, your sandwiches here with ham and or cheese. <laughs> I, I asked for a sandwich with ham and cheese and they, for some reason they eat ham or cheese. You can have croissant, you can have a, uh, I have certain foods here, but there's a lot of nice places to eat nearby. Yeah, here in downtown, in downtown Badajoz and around Badajoz. The weather here is, it's uh, fairly cold. I think the last I checked outside, it was 45 degrees. It's gonna go down to about 40 in the night. But inside the facility, it is, it is okay. I mean, I'm wearing a t-shirt, I'm not wearing a jacket. So that, Yes. Very civilized. Okay, people. <laughs> you mean they respect the line? So, looks like very civilized. Yeah. And uh, so uh, we, we're standing in line. That's why you have a. We're stuck in the same place. It's because I'm in a. I think I'm in a line. So just to give you a view place again. There you see the other ham cutter. And you see a view of the arena. Oh my God. Until the meat gets low, yeah, it's getting close to the bone. That's not good. <laughs> and I don't know if they have another one here. So let's see, let's see.
And this is a, supposed to be the night that most people come. Uh, so they got the most people tonight, Saturday. Ah, gracias. Dando de, de, conse de conseguir una bandejita a la doña que está ahí atrás. Ah, no, no, no. Bandejita no. Si quieres grabar te dejo, pero bandejita no te dejo. <risa> <risa> Oye, nadie me da una bandejita. No, no, venga. Esta gente que otra. Antes de eso, me dan un sequillajara antes de darme una bandejita. Sí, aquí sí. <risa> so, yes, yeah, so having a great time. Que te lo ganas, ya te, ya te lo ganas. Ya. Te ganas te gana gracias, y... ah, pues gracias. No, mi, no, mi, no, mi mujer no. se va a comer casi todo el jamón, no, así que como quiera. Por todo, pero... por todo lo que nos ha salido. No, que gracias, gracias. Y gracias. Usted, ah, espérate, este es el Club Batallador contra de Zaragoza. Están en fila, ustedes están, siempre son, son un equipo. Un equipo, junto. Menos para jugar, ahí, ahí se sa sacan los puñales. So I'm here with the, the guys from Club Batallador, Zaragoza. There's a Wargaming Club and they have their convention. Usted tiene su convención, ¿cuándo fue? En noviembre. En noviembre. Y este año vamos a repetir. I'm going to do it again in November. You had about 200 people, ¿verdad? 200 personas. 250. Okay, wow. Zaragoza, right? It's a limit of 250. Oh, you got a limit? Yes, for the, for the because the space is... is oh, limited. I see. It's enough. Uh, but, I mean, those are the problems you want to have when you when you have more people to come to the convention because then no, that... No, it's, 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 it's another type of convention. Oh, okay. The, this is one, one, one exhibition of war games, it's marvelous. Yeah. I mean, since we're waiting for you for the ham, we can. Okay. okay, you can hold this. Hello. Oh, okay. So let's let's go back. What's your name? No, uh, I am Domingo. I am, I am Domingo. Yes, from Zaragoza, from Spain. Zaragoza. Okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank, hello. <laughs> okay. No, uh, I think so. Bellota is a, a, a best exhibition I, I, I can I, I can I can see because it's necessary, it's bigger, it's spectacular. Okay. But in, in Sarosa we, we made we made another convention. You made your convention, uh, yeah. Another first, convention. First time. This is different. This, this okay. is one exhibition to excite uh, war, war games, war games, and Sarosa is one exhibition for gamers from gamers. Okay. You you if you come to Sarosa, you come to play. Oh, you're going to play. Okay. okay. No, I, I told to you, left, left here the camera. Play, if play I with go, me, please. If I go, however, not, I, I go to work. film. Not <laughs> war, not, not, only play. Only, only play. play. Enjoy. Oh, I see. Oh, okay, it's, it's other type. Okay, I see. Okay. I see the, I see the dynamics. Okay, yes. that's great. Thank you so much. That's great. And, uh, this is my friend Lorenzo, okay? But you, you can ask to hi. <laughs> okay, so. Thank you. No, no, thank you for, for the information and, and uh, uh, very nice uh, jerseys you have there. Club Batallador. Yes, we only play. We love games. Yeah. And who is, uh, who is the royal figure in the Club Batallador? Who's that? It's, it's a, a king of the uh, reign of Aragon. King, oh, king, king of Aragon, Aragon is an, an ancient of Aragon. kingdom of, of Spain. Spain in the mid, in the, in the mid age, they, they have uh, some kingdoms. And they had the seat in Zaragoza, right? Yes. The king of Aragon. Okay, great. And so that's... Zaragoza and other places like Catalonia, like Sicily, in Italy. Oh, Aragon okay. is very, very bigger in the Mediterranean. Okay. Okay. But it's well, only old times. But uh, the, this is one king of Aragon. Oh, okay, the, great. The 1000, 1000th thing. 1000, Well, that's the 11th century, right? 100. 100. 100. 100. 100. 100. 100. 100. Before, before yes. Spain united so, so, and became sorry. one. Right? Excuse, excuse me for my like English. Ah, that's great. Uh, that's great. 11th century. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's easy to say. 11th century. And now, no, no. Take, take you, take you play for the, for the, for the doña, please. Ah, uh, yes. I, got, I have to take a, a plate to my, to my wife over there. So. Oh, okay. So. For you. Okay, we'll be taking this yes. to my, my wife over there. She's going to be very happy. Enjoy and continue playing. And I'll this. be back and then I'll continue filming this, okay? Okay. So we're going to gonna walk over there. And thank you. Gracias a ti, gracias. So I'll be right back. I'm going to take this over to her over there. She, she's going to appreciate it. You see that uh, 
people are returning to their tables. I have I have Javier with me here. Javier, let them. Where are you? Okay, no, just a hello. So, uh, what do you want to say? What do you want to, to, to know? No, we want to give this to Marisol. Okay. So uh, and then we'll we can do the, the rounds around the tables. Perfect. And I'm here to be your cicerone, but you know that play better than me. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, it's good to have an assistant. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm gonna see. Uh, I've, I've seen some new games on the tables that I haven't seen before, so we can cover those. No. But the most important thing is taking this over there. So let's take it over yes. there. Some pop, some people can hear to for for the hand. Oh. <laughs> for the Iberico ham. Some people just sign up for the ham, huh? Yes, and for the beer, <laughs> and for the cheese. How many games did you play? No, none, but I ate uh, like a half a pound of ham. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Okay. Uh, okay. Esto es para ti, baby. Toma, jamón. Ok, que te aproveche. Oh, she's happy now. Ok. okay. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's get back okay. to... Be careful. Yes. Don't, don't step over Holland. Don't step over those maps. <laughs> yes. Ok. Act to meaning. <laughs> ok, here we, have, here we have a question by Rolf. Yes. No, but before that, Dante says he's, he wants a slice of ham to it. If I knew a way of sending it to over, yes. Vini Bidi? Vini Bidi Comi time. <laughs> yes. Okay. And uh, one of your boys bought such a large ham from Spain for Christmas. It was fantastic. Great. Okay. So let's go to Rolf. What game? I can ask you also, Francisco Javier, what sí. game of all of them has caught your eye the most? El más que te interesa de los juegos que tú has visto. Bueno, I, I have interest in, in a lot of games that I see in the Bellota. I saw yeah. Bellota. But maybe the, the game that I uh, expect with more, more interest, maybe uh, the King of the North or... The King of the North? Or the other side of the, of the hill. And the other side of the hill. That, because yeah. the other side of the hill is a very, very different... Yes. It's a unique uh, world game. It's, it's El Sudista. Que bueno verlo. Ya tuvo su jamón. He probado un poquito de Un poquito. You had your ham. Okay, great. Okay, muy rico, muy rico. <laughs> okay, so Hola. <laughs> pues bueno, qué bueno. Pues. Me alegro mucho de verte. Okay. Y es bueno de verte otra vez. ¿Cómo no? Okay. 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 El sudista, he's the south guy. He always wears a confederacy hat or something. And his other friend, they're from Sevilla, he wears a northern hat. So when they play Civil War games, you you know which guy is going to be which side here. So... Okay, here we Paco Ronco, estamos en vivo. Oh, encantado. Hola, ¿cómo están ustedes? ¿Ya tuviste tu jamón? Eh, algo, 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 de jamón, algo. ¿no? Okay. Es importante, hay gente que dice que viene solamente por el jamón. Bueno, es que está bueno y merece la se, pena. Se este, dejan este ganar ahí en los juegos y ahora viene el jamón, eh, lo bueno. Merece la pena, dejar el tablero y venirse claro, a comer un buen sí, jamón. Vale la pena, sí, qué bueno, qué bueno. Pues estamos pasándola muy bien. Esto, cada vez hay más gente, más entusiasmo. Sí, la verdad es que sí, porque este año somos casi 400. Esto Almost es 400 de lo más grande que puede haber en el mundo. This is the, the largest the concentration of people in the Bellota Con, and this is a... A great facility, una facilidad estupenda, sí. que tiene espacio para crecer, there is room for growth, and a lot of enthusiasm, we have a lot of people from other parts of Europe. Sí, además viene gente de toda Europa y de fuera de Europa. De fuera de Europa Yo les animo a que vengan el próximo año, por Vamos, supuesto. Uh, yes, I, I'm getting questions on how to get to Badajoz, so I'm going to have to do, when I get to Puerto Rico, like a, a, a show on how you can get to Badajoz, for people who want to get here, from the States, so... <laughs> Bueno verte, Paco. Muchas gracias. A ustedes. Ok. Mucho éxito ese juego que yo vi de la Guerra de Independencia. ¿Cómo se llama? Ese juego se llama Napoleon's Iberian Ulcer. La oh. úlcera ibérica de Napoleón. Napoleon's Iberian Ulcer. About yeah. the War of Independence. Y cubre todo desde 1808. 8 al 13. From 1808 to 1813. You have the whole 
uh, campaign because uh, the, the GMT game, I think, starts in 1811. Yeah. So here. Ten. 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 Wellington. You are talking of Wellington. Of oh, Wellington, yeah. Yeah. It, does, it, it, ten. It, it doesn't cover the whole thing. This one covers the whole thing, and it's a block game, right? Sí, es un juego de bloques, pero además no es un juego solo militar, sino okay. que incluye también la pacificación, el conflicto civil, la guerra civil que hay entre los propios españoles, okay, so entre includes, los patriotas que son liberales y los patriotas que son absolutistas. Okay. Es decir, un juego sobre toda la guerra, no solo sobre It's las operaciones the militares. War, including the pacification, you had parts of the, of the Spanish populace that were pro-French and part that were anti-French. So you have a y empieza desde que los franceses invaden. Empieza en mayo de 1808 May con el alzamiento popular y la conjura fernandina contra el poder establecido against, uh, español y la presencia francesa. Estaba Godoy, ¿verdad? Godoy era el ministro. No, ya lo habían quitado. Ya lo habían quitado. Estaba ah. Carlos IV y Fernando oh, okay. VII, el que fue séptimo, luego su hijo, oh, okay, le dio yeah. un golpe de estado y lo quitó. Ferdinand VII. So that's that's where the game starts with the populace rising. Y ahí entonces que entran los franceses. Sí. And then it gets worse. And then <laughs> entonces empieza the war, the guerrilla y, wars. Y el juego empieza con el alzamiento español, and de modo que los franceses quieren sofocar la rebelión, así como si fuera una operación de policía. Y a medida que los españoles generan ejército, pues se genera una guerra regular. El juego es un diseño de Rasmus Larsen, un chaval, de un, 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 un hombre de Dinamarca. Ah, yo creo que era tuyo. No, yo lo voy a fabricar, yo lo voy a producir. Rasmus Larsen. Ok, vamos a ver si ahorita yo paso por allá, por la mesa. Y, y nos enseñas en detalle qué, qué conlleva el juego y los elementos del juego. De acuerdo. Pero se ve súper interesante. It's very interesting. First, because of the theme. There's not a lot of games that cover the whole war and that are like playable in. ¿En cuánto tiempo se juega el juego? En unas siete horas. Seven hours. But, pero imagino que va a tener escenarios, ¿no? Sí, uno por año. It's going to have a scenario one for you. One year. and a half hour per scenario. One and a half hour per scenario. So that, that, that is great. I mean, people. They think about the Napoleonic Wars, they tend to forget that in Spain you had a set, a, a complete war with a multitude of battles yeah. going on for, what was that, six years or seven years? ¿Cuántos años? Seven. Seven years, that's a long time. Well, muy bien, estaremos pasando por allí, Paco. Gracias. Nos veremos. Thank you. A vosotros. Okay, appreciate it. Okay, so, continue. Está bien, está bien. So I, I haven't seen that game yet, but that would be one of the games that I would be interested in uh, because of the topic. And we have John Longshore with us. I should drop the camera and go play. Listen, if I play, yes, I could play and then do no videos. So my, my main goal is to bring this to you so that you can see how wargaming is is conducted in other parts of the world you can see very common elements between all of us war gamers but it's very specific to the country you have different customs and it's always nice to, to see that okay and William says that when it comes to a new game purchases we rely on the advice of knowledgeable experts such as well I'm not an expert <laughs> I only what I do normally if you see my videos I don't give an opinion that, oh, this is a great game. I usually don't do that. But I'll tell you, for example, that Crusade and Revolution is a great CDG. But normally what I do is I'll do a video showing how the game plays, and then you decide if you like it. Because it, it's a matter also of taste for many of you. So, uh, yes, Eric does a great job with the Napoleonic games. Ardwolf is a walking encyclopedia, yes. So he's very knowledgeable. He can... I can listen to Wardwell for hours and hours and hours, so yes, they, they do a great service to the hobby. Okay, this, this, this is a, it's a convention that has grown and finally because we're out of the COVID, it's, we have a large venue, which is uh, very adequate to cover. You see the, the table, this is very large, and this is Pavilion A. There's Pavilion B parallel to this on the other side there, which is one and a half times larger than this one. So they got a lot of space to grow here. And we have this year, we had people from uh, France coming, publishers, 
and we had Buka from Germany. And I told Mauro Faina, hey, you got to bring the Italian companies here. You got to bring everybody from Europe. Because you, you can exchange ideas and see different influences in war games, which is different normally than what you see in the States. And we have something in common. Both of our wives are named Marisol. Oh, okay, great. And yours is from Nicaragua, so Viva Marisol, the, the two Marisoles. Thanks, William. What was the name of the Napoleonic game he was describing? Uh, it, it's a game, uh, something about the Spanish. I know, I know. ¿Cómo se llama? La ulcera española de Napoleón. Napoleon's Spanish ulcer. And then when you look up, that, that's not the only in Spanish independence game here either, because Kike Espárrago, who is the designer of Congress of Vienna, is playtesting his Spanish, I think his game is called Spanish, the Spanish also. Uh, we have more uh, uh, games of, about, this, yeah. about this, the, the war against the France in the, in the beginning of the civil uh, century 19. Yes. It's, uh, it's a new project for NAC, Yes. Called uh, Vals 1989. It's a, it's a, tacti a tactical game. Oh, that's a tactical one. But, but yes, a tactical, yes. Okay, but I'm talking about Kike Sparrago has a strategic Spanish independence game also. He's playtesting, he has two tables there. I saw it last year and he's developed it further. So it's another situation where you have two games on the same conflict, which when you look at them, you never see them rarely. In the United States, of course, you have a Wellington, but Wellington doesn't cover the whole campaign. So it's something really interesting that, that you can see here. And we have uh, Dante, common elements, many wargamers are going bold. Yes, that's right. That's also, <laughs> that's also a common element. Okay. Okay, and you are welcome, John. So we're here at, uh, in the part with the ham. I think most people have collected their plates. We have, a, we have uh, people here enjoying themselves. So they're going to be returning to their tables pretty soon. So, I'm over to see. Si damos una caminatita por ahí. A ver vale, yo. a ver si vemos a alguien. Si ¿Quieres entrevistar a alguien? ¿Quieres buscar a alguien en concreto? Bueno, no, no, no tiene que ser entrevistar, pero por ejemplo, discutir los juegos. Mira, aquí tienes un juego de Britannia. Sí. Esto es la Britannia, pero esto no es la edición de Avalon Hill. No es la edición de Avalon Hill. No, esta, esta, esta edición es la que sacó en España De Beer. Ok, De Beer, que yes. es un publisher español. Uh, 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 Publish esta edición. Sí, yes, uh, but es uh, it's, it's original design de esta versión es de. Um, Fantasy Flight Games. Okay, I have the Avalon Hill version, and this looks very nice. A nice it's publication. This is an old version? Yeah, it's uh, edition 4 from Fantasy Flight. There was another edition afterwards. Okay. Uh, from, um, I think, from PSC in, in, in the UK. Okay. okay. And, uh, and this was the last edition, the sixth one. Wow. And I discussed with uh, Lewis Pacifer, who is a game designer. He's planning even make to make a seven edition because uh, I'm doing the computer version of this game, the, the which has what? been the computer version. Oh, that you're doing the computer version? Yes, yeah, oh, the, the game is available already on Steam since wow. uh, six months, okay. and we are now making the multiplayer version on computer. Yes. And if the sales are okay, we'll probably reprint a seven edition of this oh. board game because the game is like 40 years old. You know, it was yeah. printed the first time in 1980, something like that. And this is uh, the version from like five or six years ago. Oh, I see. Okay. Maybe oh. more. Maybe even more than that. Wow. So the rules change a little bit each time. So players, when they play, yes. nobody is certain that they, they have the right rules. You know, <laughs> as they play with the six, the four, the five edition. Nobody, everybody's lost. And you know the joke today that's the best one in my life. Uh, we played, the guy has the Romans, and he has to roll a lot of sixes to succeed. Yes. And I took some colored dice from my friend Gozalo in his game. Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, you have colored dice. You need colored dice to differentiate your units. And the guy was unlucky. I'd never seen that. He rolled 100 dice, not a six. 
realized the dice has only one, two, three. <laughs> because the design of his game. <laughs> That's the first joke, the best joke I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and the guy is devastated, you know, he's played the Romans. They were, that was you never killed Salah, anyone. Huh? Rolling three, one, twos, and threes, huh? All the time, okay. Yeah. That was fun. Wow, that, that, that was, was that's fun. incredible. And that was after he rolled like a hundred times? Yeah, oh, yeah, there's, yeah. There's no I four, said, fives and it's sixes. impossible to have such a bad luck in life. You know, it's impossible. <laughs> and so we wish him to go to outside and find a girl. I mean, that's, he should be lucky then. But oh, then we'll well, probably okay. restart the game because <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. that was a, a very good joke. And you know, I was very innocent. I said, okay, take those colors dice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not cheating. <laughs> that was funny. Oh, boy. It's, uh, wow, it's so that, the but this Britannia Brit game is, is wonderful. And uh, I was telling my friends here that uh, I'm right now a, a computer version of Hispania. Hispania is the same on the story of Spain. Uh, it was published in the 93. Uh, the game was made by a designer. It has been published by a French company. But it's out of the market since like probably 20 years. I have a copy. Yeah, I'll yeah, you have a copy. Yeah. So I will redo it. It's already my prototype is ready. It's going to be on the market uh, this because the the author is okay for a reprint because the game has been out of the market since probably 30 years. I think the the edition from as you wish you have is uh, published from 893 at the same time I did Europa Universalis. Mm -hmm. It was the same uh, the same release. My my version in Spanish from the beer. I think it was published maybe in the uh, 24, 25. Yes, probably yes. Because initially it was just a, a, a print and play game from, uh, from Germany. And then the French guy did some modification, but uh, it was very much old uh, fashioned. And now we have redesigned, make new graphics, uh, improve the rules. And the good thing is that because the computer engine is made, we can make more games on the same, uh, let's say, gameplay system. So we plan to have uh, a game on China, a game on India, a game on uh, Greece, ancient Greece, uh, and maybe something also on the Middle East, like the ancient Egypt, Babylon, and, and, uh, and all the things. So there's plenty of things. The good thing is that once the engine is made in the computer, then you have to produce nice graphics, write the story, write the event, translate, the game is playable in seven languages already. Uh, and I try to find uh, local players. So the Spanish version of the game, of uh, Britannia, is made by uh, somebody from Punta de Lanza. So uh, I take my friends here and say, OK, can you help? Check my Spanish uh, or German, Chinese, Portuguese, French, Italian. Well, seven languages. I love the language. Yes. Yes. And, and for our viewers, we're talking about your company's international team. Yes, that's my company for the board game. For and board I have uh, other companies for uh, computer games. I have, okay. uh, my company for computer game is Avalon Digital. Avalon Digital, oh, yes. okay. And uh, we have probably something like almost 30 different uh, war games on okay. computer. And we are slightly moving also to board games. Oh, okay. So it depends on the subjects, when there is a market or not, to, and the okay. interest from the players. Okay, great. One, one question, Philip. Do you think that the future of the war games may be in the computer too? Yes and no. I mean, they, <laughs> no, the reason is that the same players, people who play on computer also play on, I, I do both. The thing is that it's more and more difficult to have exceptional events like here where you meet players. The, the fact is that we are all lonely. So a good way to, uh, that's how I see it. Get a game that you like, play on computer versus the AI. It's not the perfect ex ex experience, but it's good already. Or you can play multiplayer when the game has a feature. And then when you really like it, find real ones. Uh, because you, you will never find the experience of like seeing the face of other guys when you do tricks or just laughing together. The computer cannot do that. But okay. I check my numbers, I check the people, and in fact, most com uh, board gamers buy computer games now. Uh, the thing is that the new generation, look at us, we are all old people. Uh, the new generation goes to the computer first. And if you manage to make them like the concept, like the board game, like the war games, then they will come. Uh, I just released a big game on the Korean War, and there was a Korean war gamer who helped me. The guy is 20 years old. So the guy came from the computer, and then he says, ah, I like war games. So that's a way also to get uh, the younger generation because 
they don't even know that this exists. Mm -hmm. It's older than them. <laughs> then, then the computer can be uh, allied yes. from the, for the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And in fact, my experience, because I, I found it when I developed the Europa Universalis with uh, Paradox in, in Sweden, uh, that was a board game, so I brought it to them. We made the computer game together, and then there were something like four or five million people who bought this game, and some of them don't even know it was a board game. And when they do a board game, which is nothing to do with the original one, they get lost. But basically, uh, then they realize it exists. And I, I saw one day on Facebook a, a funny, a funny joke. There was a, a father and a son, and the son was saying, "Dad, is it true that Europa Universalis was a board game?" And the son said, "Yes, it was." And the son is like, "Oh, what happened? <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Just yeah. like it was uh, ages ago." Yeah. That was funny. Wow. No, yeah, I, I, I really believe there is a, a huge market because on average there are probably half a million, uh, probably more regular computer players yeah. that are interested in war games, computer war games. And I would say probably half of them, maybe more, are also board gamers. Mm -hmm. So they can interact. And we are in the digital world anyway, so uh, yeah. it's good. But my personal gut feeling is always, and that's my philosophy with my products, is like, I love board games. I am from the board game, let's say, atmosphere and era. So that's what I do with this one. It's like, find a board game, make it digital to people who find it, but keep the spirit. Britannia on computer is exactly playing like the board game. The only thing that we add is like, no counting, no dice rolling that are painful. Just save time on that, have fun, but feel the, the atmosphere mm -hmm. and bring some new things that can help the player discover and enjoy it. Okay, great. In addition, you know, with uh, computer games, it's sometimes faster to design new games. Like I just recently released last week a game on the typing, the typing war in China. And it's a big success in China since, uh, since a week. But nobody would have ever published such a game in the board game industry because there's no market. But now I'm contacted by Chinese board game publishers who say, hey, can I get the rights? Because they finally found that maybe a few thousand people play the game and say, hey, maybe I can sell the board game too. But nobody would have sold it before. And the game, I, I must pay homage to the guy. The typing game uh, come from my friend Richard Berg, which I knew a long time ago. And we discussed one night, and he had designed this game for strategy and tactics like 40 years ago. And the game was called Manchu. And it was a wonderful war, magazine war game. And since that time, I say, OK, I'll do that game as a computer game. And the game I did is a tribute to uh, Richard Design. That was a wonderful game. I have a, I, currently I'm playing a game called Assault on Gallipoli. Yes. And I think it's been brought to your attention. Yeah, yeah, I already if, uh, with uh, Kieran uh, Lockley or something like Kieran, that. Kieran yeah, he's from he's from yeah. Brisbane or somewhere in Australia. Yeah, so, uh, we discussed together already. He's quite busy with his uh, real life job, but we discussed. And the goal is that I will make a computer version of his design uh, so that people discover the, uh, the Battle of the Dardanelles and the Anzac yeah. and all these things. So I already made the prototype. And when Kieran has some free time, yeah, then you will test and we adjust so that the game on the computer, because I have an engine that does almost the same thing like his board game design, mm -hmm. and I already saw like 20 different subjects on that matter. So the, my next release will be Stalingrad and Gallipoli is a perfect yes. uh, fitting. It's, it's one of those list. crucial battles that you see very few games on. Yeah, nobody, because nobody. They, people feel it's boring, but in the computer, you have the fun, you can have nice, good-looking artwork, uh, you can have animations, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of ambience, and you can also explore a lot of uh, what-if and other opportunities. Like, I give the option to the player, like, okay, play with more troops, maybe more German support, uh, less mines, uh, Royal Navy goes in, whatever, uh, and they can play the same game over and over without having to, to buy tons of components. Great. So we're, we're still working. The, let's say the first draft is made. And probably, if everything goes well, I'd have, because I never work alone. I always work with a designer. So when he has time, then with luck, maybe next year we'll be on the market. OK. And that the good thing is that the, that's what I like in this. The game is already a proven design. 
I mean, people have played it. Exactly. They know it's good. Of course, on the computer, you have to tweak a little bit things because you can't do exactly like it's written in the book. But sometimes it's also a way to improve the rules. Like when I discussed with Lewis Pulsifer on the Britannia, I said, OK, this rule of yours, I don't like it. It's too complex to program. So can I scrap it and do it differently? And finally, he says yes, because overall, 95% of his rules are there. And the 5% yeah. which are tricky or arguing, then I can change and we, we change. It's a way to progress also on okay, the, on the project. So uh, that's great to hear. That's one game that I'm playing. I'm doing a playthrough. I'm having a great time with. Yes. And it's a really I didn't know you were on the story. OK. I, so. I, I'm doing a playthrough. I played already turn one. Yeah. So I, I'm playing the Anzac landing scenario. Yeah. So when I get back home, I have to finish it. So uh, that's and, great. And you know, the good thing is that his design is only on Anzac Cove. Right? Yes, that's but right. But in fact, his plan is to do all the Gallipoli uh, oh, sector. Okay. And so what I did for him is that I prepared already all the other sectors so that they will be in the computer game. And before he can print them as a board game, he can print them into the computer with the rules. Oh, it's, and yeah. if it's fun, or he says, OK, this is not good, and he can tweak whatever he it wants. It helps to play test the, the whole yes. thing. Yes, it's a, it's it a good way to play test the game. Oh, that's great. That's a great and idea. And that's something we like, because it's very easy to tweak because uh, I usually make an editor with the computer software so that even the designer who has no knowledge at all of uh, coding can do the work. He has just to tweak the values like he would do by writing on his card or in his rule book, and that works the same. Okay. You have been doing this kind of computer games adaptation for the last 25 years, so I start to know a little bit on how it's good, and I just love it. Okay. I mean, I don't make much of a living, but I love it. <laughs> okay. And, uh, well, it's, uh, this year, I think, I'll have almost 10 games out in the market in 2023. Okay, Most of them war games or board games, that's including great. our friend uh, from Australia. Okay. So, well, Philippe, thank you for all that information. And thank you for your I'm time. I'm very happy for Assault on Gallipoli because this is a, one of those games that I played and I, and yeah, I actually enjoy playing it. I think it. it will be a great game and yes. already the board game is beautiful. Yes, it so, is. It's a very, very uh, yeah. special game and it looks great and plays very smoothly also. So sure. thank you very much for the information and best of thank success. Thank you and enjoy your stay. Thanks okay, for being thank here. You. Merci, okay. merci, Philippe. Okay, thank you. That was Philippe Thibault yeah. from International Team, which is a board game company. It's a new company, but he has the other Avalanche Digital for computer games. Here you see Congress of Vienna. Apparently it's going to be played. Uh, very interesting that Philip talked about the use of the computer like a tool for, uh, for facility the, the segment of, of the game. Yeah, you don't have to print components, they're, they're already ready for, for play. Yeah. So this is... This is an old-fashioned uh, not working. working. Well, not the no, this is not the Guerra Civil Yes, the Guerra Civil yes. But the, 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 the map is uh, pink and plate. Oh, okay. Because maybe they lost the original. The original. Okay. In 2029 or 2010, uh, was a, a company. So well, like a little a company campaign, that yeah. print, make a new print of the of the Spanish Civil War from uh, from NAC, and I have a copy of that game. And in that game, uh, the the design, the designer uh, take the original rules yes. and make a little improvement of a new a new rules. Okay, okay, I see. You're welcome, Rolf. That's great news for. Uh, but I think this this is a, a fan made. Gallipoli. It's a it's a fan made because there is a, a the. There is a lot of uh, kinds of terrain, but in the original only only plains, hills, mountains, yeah. okay. and the rivers. Nothing more. Oh, I see. Okay. So this is one of those old maps you're saying that they're showing here. Is it, is this is a prototype of a new game coming up. I really don't know. I don't really. I don't know. We'll have to ask. Let's uh, see. Uh, 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 we'll ask around later. Let's see. Let's uh, but I think maybe 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 the same by, by someone from okay. Quantas. Quantas is not the the airline from from we'll from Australia. Out. Australia or New Zealand? I have no idea. Let's okay. let, let's go this way. And let's let's keep on seeing what's what's on the table here. 
Is this a, is a Star Wars game? We can play here. Yeah. This is uh, Imperial Struggle. Let me see, what else do we have there? Is this a game of Buka? Yeah, it's a game Buka. It's a Buka game. Let's see which one is it. Ah, no, 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 it's from Buka. It's a classic Republic of Rome. Republic of Rome. Republic of Rome, yes. yes, yes, Republic yes. Of Rome. yeah. Now it's very difficult to find this, this, this copy. Um, yes, I have a copy of, the, of this game. I have, I have the Avalon Hill version, and I have, I think, the. Yes, this one, was, uh, another, this was a, a, a published in Spanish by H, mm -hmm. and the original, I think, was from uh, Bali Games from Canada. Bali Games. Okay. Yes, uh, I think, I think it was. Now there's, uh, there's this is Patrick this is this is Buka. Explaining. Uh, oh, taking a group photo here, so. Task Force. So here's Patrick explaining Task Force, one of the scenarios. This is, I guess, a surface scenario. We can explain here. The great thing about this game is that it has a program instruction approach. So you learn little by little of the game. You don't have to learn the whole rule set. Carlos Marquez from the other side of the, of the hill. Ah, uh, what? Yeah. He's over there? Yes. Okay. I think he's showing which one, Imperial Struggle? ¿Dónde, ¿Dónde tú lo ves? ¿Está bien? ¿A Carlos? ¿Ahí? ¿En front de ti? Oh, okay. Carlos, Carlos Márquez. Ah, aquí está. ¿A Carlos cómo estamos? ¿Qué tal? Veo que tiene un becario. Tengo aquí, <laughs> eh, chacho, tengo refuerzos aquí. Sí, sí, sí. sí. So, Carlos, you, you have two games here. Yeah. The other side of the hill, long, long awaited release, it's going to be published. It is going to be published. It's going, going to Sometime. be published soon. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, and you have also uh, Imperial Fever. Fever. Yeah. Which also looks, it's, uh, it looks quite different from what I saw last year. So. Yeah. You've been uh, working on that too. Well, the the, the main um, mechanics are the same. Uh, yes. But uh, we have changed uh, the map and yes. uh, more like the layout rather than the content of the game. But yes, there have been some improvements and so on, but yes, it's basically the same. And that's a game about the uh, imperialism in the 19th century up to World War I, right? Exactly, starting in 1880, which is more or less after the Franco-Prussian War, yeah. up to um, the beginning of the First World War, which may or may not begin. Okay. But if it does, it triggers the end of the game. And how many countries do you, do you have, how many players? It's for four players, and the four powers are uh, the United Kingdom, France, uh, the Central Empires, which is uh, Germany and Austria-Hungary together, yes. and then what I call the emergent powers, which is the United States and Japan. Oh, and awesome. then there are lots of minor powers, such as um, Russia, Spain, uh, the Netherlands, Portugal, uh, Belgium, and so on. Yeah. Okay. And I heard somebody said that it plays similar to... Uh, to uh, time of Crisis. Time of Crisis yeah. and Pax Britannica too. Well, uh, the time it covers is Pax, Pax Britannica. Britannica, and the kind of things that happen there is also Pax Britannica, but the mechanisms are completely Mechanics. different. So it's like it's a card, it's a deck builder game. Exactly, it's deck building. Uh, okay. There's some twists to it because you have to choose like a first card to decide turn order and okay. so on. But other than that, it's uh, the time of crisis choice. Yep. There's also one more tweak, and it's that uh, in time of crisis you play your whole. A hand of cards, uh, yeah. and then the next player does. And here you take one action, and then each player takes one action. So it's more next, it's more interactive. You don't have to wait for long. More dynamic, play. yeah. And then more everybody uh, rebuilds their hands or refills their hands at the same time. Oh, okay. So there's no downtime, waiting for other people to okay. refill their hands and so on. So are you are you gonna be tomorrow here? I will be here tomorrow. I have um, another uh, run for uh, the other side of the hill. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. And uh, so I'll see if I can catch you when. And, and we can take a look at the, even though I, I've gone over to the table by myself and I've filmed some some footage of the of the game of yeah. the, the Imperial Fever, but see if, you, if I can catch you for ten, five or ten minutes. Okay, so it would be you, wonderful. You can show us. I'm always ready for you, okay, Joe, you. you know that. Thank you, Carlos. <laughs> Appreciate it. And
And Appreciate it. Congratulations you. for the other side of the hill. Thank you very much. Okay. Can I tell you something? Yes. Uh, this morning I, we had no tests for that game it's because I was playing with Imperial Fever. And then I uh, looked around and there were six people playing the other side of the hill. By themselves? By themselves. They oh, had been watching. Sign. Yeah. And uh, they had a good time and they had been playing today most of the day. So this is encouraging and no, uh, I saw, make, I saw made them, me feel very happy. It was very intense. They were having a really good time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think that's one of the points of the game. Yeah. of the whole hobby, having a good time. That's the whole point. Thank yeah. you, Carlos. Thank best you. Of best success. See you tomorrow. Gracias. Okay. Fine. Okay. Uh, Carlos Masga is, is not the, the, the only designer for NAC that bring two games. Right. For example, we have uh, uh, Jose, Antonio, Jose Antonio Neva that bring Tagmento. It's a... Yes. A game of cards. Uh, it's a solitary game, right? Yes, solitary, solitary. Uh, no, no. It's, um, I remember it's possible to to, to possible? play to, to play uh, one versus one and okay. have a solitary a solitary mode. Okay. And it's uh, it have the art and try to and here, to bring to bring the spirit of the of the, of the Spanish tertio. You're, you're going for a labyrinth there. Yeah, I mean, I'm just waiting for someone to join us. Okay. It's such an interesting game. It has, I mean, a depth. I mean, on, on the Howell, it has been the war on terror. Okay. It's only like the basic game, so it doesn't include the expansions because they don't have it. But it's a wonderful one. Okay, yes, and so so this is a one, one, one game which is quite different from the 30 years war period. Definitely, this is my favorite <laughs> yeah. one, so it, it's so fun to play. Yeah. And even the bot system, they have been... Uh, even the bot system is... It has been improved. Uh, it's not the same uh, bot uh, that it was in mean, the first edition that has been developed. And the expansion did include from the jihadi start of the ISIS, where it was like the Arab uh, Spring. And at the, the last one, it includes I mean, the downfall of the ISIS okay. and the Trump tweets, which make a mess in the whole world. So the, the, the expansions bring a new angle to the game and... and and they're, uh, they're, they're, because sometimes you see expansions that they look like they've been added on for, just for being added on, but these expansions really... They're accurate bring... on history yeah. and how it's been progressing, and mainly uses the same map, so there is now on the expansions where you include Nigeria and Mali, Okay. but it's the same map with just some tweaks that adds up in a really good flavor mm -hmm. and something interesting and unique. Okay, and Volko did a great job. Yeah, I think yeah, Volko knows what he's doing, definitely. So uh, it's great, it's great, you're going you're gonna to play Labyrinth. So you're going to be here tomorrow also? As well, yeah. Now we're just having fun with some games uh, that I'm not designing, so hopefully I'll have time to enjoy it today and tomorrow morning. Okay, well, I appreciate it, and thank you for the Spanish road game. Thank you, hope that you will like it. I will, li I will definitely be showcasing it in my channel, and I have the, the extra copies that you gave, you gave me, so I'll be, I'll be putting those together and, and, and giving them away thank also. You. Thank okay, you so thank much. You. Thank you, Danny. Okay. Sounds, Danny. So we, we've been at it for one hour, seven minutes. This is the area of NAC. This is the NAC area, but yeah, but I think people are stuck with the ham. So I, I think what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to call it a day. <laughs> and uh, I'll let that... Javier, tell me, tell me. I think what I'm going to do for now, I'm going to call it a day. And uh, at what time tomorrow do they open again? At 10? At 10 o'clock, yes. yes. Okay, and today, and 10, I'm going to see if I can, I, I want to see if I can get Pedro Iñak in an interview about oh, the yeah. 37. Oh, yes. Is there? Is there? Is there? Yes. Yeah, but he's playing. Uh, yes, I, I was all the, all the, he was all the, all the, all the afternoon oh, playing Cruz, Cruzada and Revolución from oh, the Spanish man. Civil War. Okay, they're playing. Okay. Hello, Pedro. Good night. Hello. ¿Cómo fue el juego? ¿Quién ganó? Ganó la República. La República. Ganó la República. ¿Y quién tú eras? La República. Ah, la República, The Republic One. Sí, sí, Great. pero ha estado batallado, eh. Ha estado, hemos estado ahí con las espadas en alto. So, and did you go the full, all the turns? Todos los to to turnos. Eh, we, we reached the, the eighth turn, at the eighth turn, the, the just uh, grab, the Republic grab the, the victory points oh, okay. needed to, to win. Okay, great, great. Yeah, it was fun, a fun, just uh, with friends. Okay, that's today. great, that's great. 
Uh, the Asturias 36-37 game. Yeah. When can I interview you about that? If you want uh, tomorrow or whenever you want. I, I could I could take and a brief at your disposal. At the brief pause and we could do it today tonight. Tonight, okay. And then, okay, so uh, we'll get a for our, for our viewers. We'll be showing you Asturias 36-37 by Pedro Iñaki Martinez, the designer of the War of the Triple Alliance. So you can put a face to the name, and uh, so we'll take a little short break. And we'll be right back when we'll set it up with the two cameras, okay? So uh, thank you guys for showing up. And uh, this is the... ¿Qué hora es aquí ahora en España, en Badajoz? Uh, now, uh, 10 to 10. It's 10 to 10. So we're going to take a short break. And we'll be right back with Pedro Iñaki. So thanks, guys. And as I always say, this is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Keep thanks online, please. Keep oh. online.